Gage. I got my coffee. I got my timer. Hey everyone, how's it going? I'm Yam Slayer. This is Yam Sketch. Um, and today I want to talk a little bit about character design. Actually, uh, one tip is um, I, you can see that I'm drawn on gray here, not white. And um, if you stare at white screen all day long, it starts to hurt your eyes quite a bit. There's just it's just too much contrast to look at black on white all the time. So. Um, so I like to work on uh, midtones when I can, and I, there's an easy way to do that actually in Photoshop, especially. So if you start a new document, any size doesn't matter, just pick. Um, it starts with this white background, and I like to just kill that as soon as possible. So come down here to the uh, adjustment layers, get a solid color, pick some midtone, click there, kill the background, and now actually you have this great background. Um, and the reason that it's good to do it this way is then if I go to my canvas size or my image size and I change the image to a bigger image to something else, um, the background's going to grow with it because this is an adjustment layer. It's always going to fit the size of the uh, canvas you're working on, which is really good. I see some people filling the background and stuff like that, but uh, then you have to update it every time you change the size of the canvas. I think that's you know a waste of time. Also, the cool thing here is anytime I feel like just changing the color that I'm working on, I can. So just create a layer above that, start drawing, sketch something out. Then when you get, uh, you know, uh, the sense that you, you kind of know what you're doing, but you're getting a little bored or you want to get a new idea or something like that, um, then what you can do is you just come over here and change up the color a little bit. Um, even, you know, maybe make it a little bit more like a sepia and you can just kind of um, ref refresh your eyes um, and um, also you can't, you, you actually probably saw that, but you can't draw on it by accident because it's as an adjustment layer. If I try to draw on it, it's going to give me a warning, which is great because, you know, sometimes you're working on a layer and then you're actually drawing on the background and you screwed stuff up and you didn't want to and blah, blah. So anyway, that's just a quick tip. Uh, for for uh, setting up a document that I think I honestly I think that's pretty useful. So tell me if, if you think so. so. Anyway, I just have a little soft gray here. Some eyes don't bleed, um, and I want to talk about um, character design. So um, someone actually asked me about this, so I want to do a little series on this. Character is obviously a huge thing. It's a its own profession, and some people spend all day long um, just making characters. Um, personally, it's something that I love, um, and um, you know, some people understand what it is, but a lot of people don't. So, um, taking a look at this, um, here's the thing about character. There's two parts to it. One part is you have shape, right? And then the other part is is you have yeah, kind of this stuff, personality. So, or, you know, another way to say that would be story, right? Like the story of your life, the story of that character, that's kind of what creates their personality. It's who they are. So on, on the one hand, you have, um, oh, should I do this? Oh, should I do this live? Let's see. Do you know how to spell? Does anyone know how to spell silhouette? Tell me if I got that wrong. That was a straight up guess. Um, so the shape or the silhouette is basically what they look like, right? So are they squarish? Are they bottom heavy, top heavy? Are they curvy? You know, are they hourglass shaped? These are all things that uh, come into play when you know more about your character. But what I recommend doing is start here. This is step one. This is step two. If you're just doodling, it's fun actually to go in reverse and just draw shapes and then think, oh, what kind of personality is this? Because you'll, you'll get that. That's one way to go about it if you're just doodling and you're doing it for fun. But when you're actually creating a character for a story or for a comic or for animation or whatever, um, you want to think about the story first and then the story will give you the personality and then the personality will give you the shape. And then now that the screen is covered with confusing arrows, we can uh, move on. So the first thing that you want to do is come up with just basically a list of, of adjectives. And there's a tons of ways to do this. Um, maybe we'll do a whole video on like 
that, but this is actually not drawing. This is a writing exercise. So if we want to come up with a person, you know, is it male? Is it female? Let's make, um, you know, I don't know. Let's make a dude. So there, it's a dude. So this one's male. We'll do a girl later. But so let's, it's dude. And what kind of dude is it? Um, well, we already said dude. So, you know, like he's kind of a hippie. Um, how old is he? Let's say he's kind of uh, 20s. You know, I don't know. Um, and or I mean, let's, hey, be even better, be specific, uh, 24, okay. Um, and then uh, what, is, it, is he blonde? Is he uh, a fox? Is he, uh, you know, is he a human? Is he an alligator? Um, those, those are all important things. So, you know, but you can even come up with that later because uh, honestly, um, uh, you know, it could be a hippie alligator or a hippie robot uh, that's 24. It doesn't really matter. So that actually could even be part of the shape because maybe, you know, the whole plot gets changed on you and now the client wants, uh, you know, everyone's an animal. That could happen. But as long as this personality is intact, like you can you can do that. So I would actually say that that's, that's even less important, even though, you know, you might be drawing a bird or a human and that seems like a big deal, but actually has nothing to do with personality. Um, and story because you can set uh, a story in any world it can be in the future it can be um, you know it can be in the wild west it can be in an animal planet whatever so so anyway so let's just do a dude it's a hippie he's 24 and then that's like just some facts right those are just factual things but then the other part that's important is um, what what are what are things that make him unique so you know like he hates uh, he hates or he hats whatever he hates uh, cats why hippies probably like cats most of the time I don't know maybe he's aller allergic so he hates cats um, and uh, you know he uh, is um, you know he's kind of he's scared most of the time he's sort of like nervous guy um, not super you know bold and courageous in the traditional sense so it's kind of shy right so here's like a shy guy so we're making a shy hippie that's a guy who's kind of youngish who hates cats and you know you can just keep going with this right like um or what are, what do they like what do they don't like uh what do they not like um you know who uh is their favorite person or thing um, what's your favorite food and really you're building a character profile so honestly uh you're making a person I mean this is it's writing right you're you're making a character and then what you're doing is you're trying to think how would that person and the way that they are affect what they look like now so you know there you can do the whole you know don't judge a book by its cover and you know just because someone looks a certain way you don't want to like prejudge them that's fine but this is not that this is like you know this is exactly where you want to do that this isn't about stereotyping, it's about character building. You want something to look like um, what someone expects it to look like because it's just going to make the, the read easy and then you don't have to you know, like fight over what the character is supposed to be. So for instance, if you want a strong dude, you know, think top heavy, think triangle. Oh, and, and this is another thing. So with characters, you just do the um, Picasso Cezanne thing. You got the circle, you got the square, you got the triangle. Uh, and then in 3D, of course, you got the sphere, looks the same as a circle, just drawing lines on it. Um, you have the box or the cube, right? You have the cone or the cylinder. A cylinder and a cone are basically the same thing. So, um, so you have the 2D shapes here, the 3D shapes here, right? Um, and with these shapes, you can make character, right? So essentially by putting these shapes on top of each other, stacking them on top of each other, um, uh, putting them next to each other, you can create all the shapes that you want to create. So if you don't believe me, let's just do this. So let me do this again. So let's make a strong top heavy guy and we'll get back to our hippie dude later. But so a strong and top heavy. Okay, well, let's take a triangle. Um, and, and then let's put it upside down. So now it's top heavy, right? So here's like a big chest. Okay, well then let's, you know, it's a dude, so he's gonna be squarish, so let's put a square for his hips. Now, there's a, there's a trick to this, and that, that is you gotta think about this stuff loosely. Um, 
when when you are drawing shapes, you know, you don't want to just uh, put a square in a circle and be done with it. You know, you want to think about these things and, you know, you're probably going to draw a line over them later that makes it more like a smooth character. It's going to depend on the art style. You know, maybe you'll add muscles and stuff like that to the chest and you'll do these things. But the important thing is that you want to build the character first. So, you know, there's two things. There's construction and idea making. And then there's like this beautiful gesture and you add, you know, like the anatomy and you have like musculature and you have bones and you have, um, you know, gesture. And then you can come back over that and then you can draw cleanly, right? You don't get the fr the final drawing in one pass. It's You have to think about this like rendering or like clay or, or whatever, like you, <laughs> you, you have to work at these things in passes. So you can't just, you know, uh, come in there and draw the perfect you know shape without even knowing what the character is never having drawn it before and just like have this perfect marvel character or whatever you can't do that you have to build it up so when you design the character at first it will probably look like flatter and crappier but think about it more like a blueprint to a house it's not the finished house um, it's a blueprint and then once you have the blueprint you can look at that as a reference and draw something that looks really cool and refined so don't worry about like putting it in a pose like I don't worry about that. I'm trying to design a character, and that's really different than um, than having a design character and drawing it, right? So uh, we'll go through that. But anyway, so let's make a top heavy guy. He's gonna be squarish here, top heavy here. He's gonna have some uh, big muscles here. So let's do some circles. And then he's gonna have kind of a tiny head. So I'm gonna either use a triangle there, you know, or I could use a box, you know, something like that. And again, use these things loosely. If you want your box to look like that, you know, which is technically a what? A trapezoid? I think that's, a, yeah, something like that. Um, then uh, then that's still a box. Don't just, you know, don't don't get too anal about this. This isn't math class, it's drawing. So I'm gonna put this here, um, you know, I could put in a cylinder here, but uh, like, I'm not trying to actually use Legos. I'm just thinking about this loosely. So here we go, here's our guy. You can already see he's got kind of that form to him. Now, depending on how cartoony you wanna go, obviously I'm going pretty cartoony. You know, you can bend the proportions. So even though a human is usually about halfway to the middle of their hips and then the other half is their legs, that would be normal proportions for a human-ish, normal-ish. Um, I'm not gonna do that. I'm gonna like force those proportions. So I'm gonna give him kind of tiny legs. So, you know, I can give him cones or cylinders, however you wanna think about this. Um, and then I'm gonna just give him little, you know, triangles for feet. So again, um, I am using these shapes, but think about them, don't be too rigid. You know, don't don't get out your ruler for this. That will screw you up big time. Just come in here and, and be loose with it. <clears throat> so now you can see actually, if I come down here, that my halfway line, my center of gravity, which is in the middle of your pelvis, um, is way not in the middle, right? I've got like a two thirds, one third thing, but that's cool because now I can, I can play with proportions. So um, by thinking of this character, I can also think about where I wanna exaggerate, you know? So for instance, uh, the arms, usually the wrist comes to about the middle of your center of gravity, your pelvis, and then your hands hang from there. So his hands probably would come from here if I was being realistic about it. But I don't have to. That's the cool thing about designing a character. I can do anything I want. So, you know, I could give him these giant gorilla arms that go all the way to the floor, right? And I kind of like the idea of it being a cone. So he's got big old shoulders and then he's got, you know, tiny little hands. So that's cool. He's like this, you know, gorilla ape. That would be a fun one to do. Or why not try the opposite? You know, why not end his arms here and give him like these these tiny little hands at the end of short little arms. So this is where you get to really play. Like there's no wrong answer here, but there is like, does it answer, does it answer the question of what I'm trying to create? Does it answer the question of this character? Um, and since this character, we don't know that much about him. I just said it was like a strong top heavy guy. We can do whatever we want. But once you start to know more about the personality, you know, it's a nervous, you know, it's like a big beefed up dude, but he's super nervous. Um, you know, maybe that would change like how that looks or, you know, he's sort of a brute. So if he's a brute, like this one kind of looks a little bit like nervous. He's got like this timidity about him because these little dainty hands, you know, if he was a brute, maybe I'd go back to the big gorilla with the big, you know, big gorilla hands and, uh, you know, big fists and that kind of thing. Right now you can be like <clears throat> more of a, an enemy or in a video game or something like that. But 
So for now, we'll, let's just, you know, think about, I kind of like the like the dainty guy thing. <clears throat> and uh, you could do, you know, so much with this. I'm just drawing a cone here and then like putting the hand on there. But you know, you could do uh, like a Popeye thing where you have like a small uh, little arm here and then you have a big old bicep, you know, and then you have your hands there. So you could do that kind of thing. <clears throat> you could do um, something where, um, you know, you have a big thing here and then this sort of tapers down, but then you have a large hand, you know, a big old fist, that kind of thing, sort of like a balloon hand. And honestly, um, it's just up to how it feels and how you feel about it. So <clears throat> the more you know about your character, you know, is it a nice person? I gotta get some coffee, hold on. <clears throat> this is me, I'm capping. I'm capping, so I gotta drink coffee. All right, so, um, yeah, so I, I kind of, I love this little, little dainty arm thing. So I'm kind of going to go back to this. So that's sort of a triangle or a cone. And if you think about it in 3D and this is a sphere, then the cone kind of wraps around it like that, right? It's going to be useful later when you start thinking about anatomy. But <clears throat> for now, just drawing with the simple shapes is great. So his cone ends and then I'm, I get to decide, you know, does he have gigo hands? No. I don't like how that looks. I think I love the little dainty hands. So I'm going to give them these little dainty hands. And then it's up to your drawing style. You know, do they do the characters have three fingers or no fingers? Maybe they have got a paddle or maybe they're more like a human. They have five fingers and you got to you just draw the little guys in detail. I kind of like the idea of doing that. But again, I don't have a brief. I don't have anything that I'm working off of. No script. This is just for fun. So I get to just play. But, uh, but you know, usually you have some kind of thing, like a project, like a game or whatever, and you have some idea where you're going. So to me, this is enough uh, to, to go on for this character for now. But the cool thing is you're designing. So here, here's what makes a design. Um, here's what design is. I mean, actually, you know, this is like a Milton Glaser quote, but... Um, Graphic design, you know, most any kind of design. It's just variation, 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 variation. And then you have to sift through them and throw out all the bad stuff and look for the best stuff. I mean, that's what you do. <clears throat> you just make lots of designs. So don't stop with one because this is really an exploring and finding process. So if you think that you have something by the first try, <clears throat> I mean, play with it anyway, because you might find something totally different. So I got this one let's make a bunch more of this guy and we'll get back to the hippie the cat hating hippie dude don't worry uh, i wouldn't leave you hanging but i like this guy so let's just make some more of them so i'm gonna go kind of small so i'm gonna start him top heavy again <clears throat> but i'm gonna vary this so i'm gonna give this one small small shoulders i'm gonna give him a big neck a little head still so all right he's already feeling a little different and i'm gonna give him like big muscles this way We'll still give him some square hips, but maybe some bigger, a bigger butt. And then same thing. I think I'd lose this character if I killed his overall proportions. So I want the kind of the, uh, this thing. <coughs> so that's two thirds and that's about one third. So I think it would change the character too much if we started giving him just completely different proportions. <coughs> All right. So now he's looking more like a, Conan the Barbarian or like a maybe even like a heroic character he could be you know good or bad depending on where we go with the rest of his design okay so um so we've got a variation of this guy same guy but variation let's do another one let's go still he's he's a top heavy muscly dude so we still have the same kind of frame let's square him off let's give him some some square or shoulders and let's give him sort of a rounded neck here and uh, a little round face so you see this can be round too that's a circle too right or a, or a ovoid whatever but you know don't think about these things so perfectly they don't have to be all right so i'm gonna go thin here like really thin and have them kind of flay out yeah i love that like almost like a little skeleton armor dude all right still with the square butt because he is a dude still gonna keep the same rough proportions this way we have Two thirds, one, two, three, about three. So we want him to end here. So we're gonna come in like that. All right. Uh, actually, this time let's give him some musclier legs, though. Let's give him some big old meaty legs, like that. There we go. 
and then like the tiny little butt. Yeah, there we go. Now he looks like a, you know, like a muscle, muscle bound fitness dude. All right, so let's put big old arms here. <clears throat> Uh, and by the way, yeah, I'm doing a human, but I mean, but this humanoid, this could be anything. It could be an alien, a creature, a robot, skeleton, a, a whatever, you know, it could be anything. Um, and then let's see, I, I don't, let's bring some of those tiny hands back. Something kind of fun about those, um, kind of balled up into fists. All right. <clears throat> so here's three different versions of this character. Let's look at them at the same size so we can compare. And... It's about the same size, right, Keaton? Okay, cool. So now, the, here's what I would do if I was making a real character. Actually, let's put them, here we go. Let's, let's do this. All right, so here, here's what I would do um, for roles. <clears throat> so I have three different versions of the same character. Muscle bound, uh, strong dude. Um, and how I would choose the right one is first of all, I would do a lot more of these, you know, do as many as you want to do. They don't take that long because you they're just triangles and stuff. So do more, do 20, do 100, whatever. Um, and then think, what is this for? You know, is it the hero in a video game? Is it uh, the enemy in a video game? Is it, uh, you know, the nice, friendly, dopey giant in a comic? Um, is it, you know, an illustration for a story and uh, it's... Um, you know, a robot, um, what, whatever it's going to be. Think about those story elements. So going back to before, we have, you know, half of it is story and the writing part, you know, what's their personality, what's their likes, dislikes, or just like what's their context. And then the other half is like these shapes and these silhouettes. And the only difference between shape and silhouette is like if you fill these in, now they're a silhouette. So when I am drawing, I try to kind of think about both at the same time, but you know, uh, once you get into this, you can start to kind of think about um, silhouettes too, because silhouettes are more like the flat shapes. So if you just draw with these 2D shapes, like you're kind of getting the silhouette already, but you can see like, does the silhouette feel top heavy and strong? Well, I mean, we use those shapes. So like, yeah, of course it does, right? I mean, it's kind of the same, but if you draw in silhouettes, sometimes that actually helps you see things that you didn't notice, like, um, you know, when I look at him here, I can see that obviously like these arms and the way that his neck scoops down, um, he's got like this tiny neck and that's kind of weird. Like if I filled this silhouette out, maybe I could, you know, kind of sculpt this and silhouettes are cool because it's kind of like sculpting. You can push things, you can erase things, you can pull things to get to a silhouette that you like. Now, again, don't worry about posing. Posing comes later after you know what the character is. Think about this really more like a blueprint. So um, if I take away that silhouette, another way that some people work that I work sometimes is just give yourself a big brush um, and uh, draw with that. So, you know, when I draw the, the, the character in the first place, so get that triangle, get the, uh, you know, get the shapes that you want and then just kind of chisel at it. And uh, this is a nice way to work because, again, like you don't want to worry about details and like you're just trying to get a basic shape and think about someone like being backlit from behind or something like that where you know they really just become this dark shadow like you can you could this happens you can see this in real life you know if you catch someone the right way like all you see is their silhouette and it tells you a lot about them you know are they wearing a belt or a backpack are they you know do they have long hair blah blah, blah. like you can catch tiny little details even though you can't see anything like you just see these shapes so yeah, so so use anything that you're comfortable with in terms of techniques. Um, the, here's two great ones for you. Draw with some simple shapes like these guys or uh, just get a big pinky brush or an ink brush or whatever. If you're working digitally, use whatever you, you like and just smear around. And then the cool thing about this is like if I brought this up and I don't like it now and it's too high, you know, get an eraser and cut that out. So I, I do like the silhouette uh, approach quite a lot too because you can... Um, you can play with it a lot. You can push and pull and, and in that way it's like clay. And then you can start to think about things like if this is a warrior, maybe I'm gonna give him some rad armor. Um, you know, think about uh, think about that and, and consider using your eraser more as a tool than as a mistake remover. Erasers are great when you use them as tools. 
and that's digitally or in real life. You know, you can um, hover your hand over the undo key uh, in in uh, digitally or in real life, but don't do that because that'll just hold you back. Push forward and, and you know embrace mistakes, like screw stuff up, and then instead of undoing it, just make it into something like maybe that was that maybe he's got a tail now and he's a lizard man you know like embrace those things they happen and uh and if you just go with it you can come up with a lot of cool stuff so here's your characters and then based on that kind of silhouette we made like a whole other character which you know this guy could easily be like some kind of cool lizard creature and uh if we just kept playing with this i bet we could come up with something super rad so um or like maybe like a croc kind of character so yeah, so keep uh, keep playing, and that's how you do characters. So um, I did promise you a weak and shy hippie that's afraid of cats, but we're at uh, we're at time here. I'm trying to keep these things under half an hour. So uh, join me next time, and uh, we will look at the uh, we'll look at drawing that hippie. We'll do go through the same process and just do from scratch, and uh, we'll get the hippie in there, and you can see what I'm talking about. But anyway, if you enjoyed that. Um, just leave some comments. Uh, if you hated it, leave some comments. You know, that's what they're for. Uh, and if you have any questions, yeah, just leave it in the comments. Uh, I'm going to try to answer people's questions. I'm Right now, I'm doing these based on what people are asking me in real life. Um, but, you know, if you have things that you want to talk about that you're confused about, that, uh, you know, you have a specific character you want to throw up on the screen and have everyone look at, uh, let's go for it. Uh, my goal with this is to make a cool community of people that are, are pushing each other forward to make their projects and make this stuff happen. So if you're into that, get on board and let's make it happen. Yeah, that's good.